All right, folks. What is up? This is one big bug, and I'm coming at you with Euro Truck Simulator 2. I may be a little quieter because it's midnight. It's one of those things I forgot to do my recordings again. Uh, I tell you. Anyways, no idea where we're going to end up today. Uh, in terms of where we're going. The mode button. <laughs> the mode button on my um, on my uh, controller was hitting in. So when I tried to turn, it turned on the wipers. <laughs> that would be some freaky, some freaky stuff, man. You get in your car, you start it up, you start driving, you turn the wheel, and your wipers come on, and your car kept going straight. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun, wouldn't it? Uh, not sure what to talk about today. Don't have a lot going on. I'll do honesty. Paydays in a couple days. Gotta run around, do errands, pay bills, blah blah blah. All kinds of little fun, yeah. I gotta clean my computer out. It's gonna be fun. Oh, what's with all the load lag, PC? Huh? There's no need for all that little hitch. None at all. Stop it. So, um. Yeah. Not much going on. Most of the stuff I I have going on is in Eve. I finally got a couple lucky strikes last night and tonight when ratting, doing my exploration. I roped in uh, nearly 800. Oh, I know what all the little hitching's about. Hello, silly. Yeah. Forgot to start the 64-bit version again. <sighs> I do that so often. It's alright. We'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. But yeah, I, um... Complexes, and they're, they're the th sites that you scan down, or uh, they're private, uh... You can basically call them raids in your game. Um... It, it, it's difficult for me to explain. Somebody else will probably do it better. But, you know, they're like... You know, in... Um, in... Like, WoW would be like going into uh, a dungeon, basically. Um, God, it's really bad today. I mean, it's hitching quite a lot. And part of that problem could be... Uh, just too much dust and heat, but I waited till evening to play, so it should be significantly cooler. It's alright, a couple more days and I'll clean it off. I have to. I just hate doing it because of everything I have to move out of the way. Yeah. I have to move um, both my monitors, my keyboard, my controller, and I have to pull the side off, pull everything out. It's really just... Yo! And it's it's really just aggravating, you know, just to do that, but it's got to be done. It's too much dust where I live. So, let me think, let me think, let me think. Where was I? Oh, yeah. And the interesting thing about the um, complexes in Eve is that there's a rating system, but the rating system goes from 6 to 7, 8, and 10. There's no 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 9. It doesn't quite make sense. There's a 6, 7, 8, and 10. 
But uh, I got a 6, which is usually one of the more coveted ones uh, because of difficulty versus loot. You can get really good loot out of it, and it's fairly quick and easy to do. Uh, the 7 of 10 is considered, like, the worst because it's a lot of rooms, takes a while, and the loot that you get is usually not worth the effort. Um, although you can get um, lucky drops out of it. You, know, you can get good loot, it's just do you. The 8 of 10 is probably the most balanced uh, in terms of difficulty versus reward. Um, and then the 10 of 10, uh, you know, people have mixed feelings about that. There are people that swear by them, and there are people that's like, it's not worth it. See, in EVE, when you do complexes, you're guaranteed only one thing, and that's known as an overseer's personal effects. Basically, the boss, you know, the, the boss ships um, drop, and depending on what level it is, depends on how much it's worth. Uh, I think the 6 of 10 is worth somewhere around 50 million, where the 10 of 10 is worth like 120 million. Uh, anything uh, beyond that is just random luck. You're not guaranteed anything else, and whatever you get is determined by the game. And there's plenty of stuff in the game that's not worth it. You know, there are certain types of kinetic, explosive, and EM hardeners, which are worth only a couple million each. Uh, so they really suck. But then there's the really good stuff that can drop. Um, shield boosters. Um, there's another one. Uh... I'm gonna slow down here because I don't know what the speed limit is. And that's a speed camera. I was considering charging right through it, but I changed my mind. What? He shouldn't have been there. That's all I gotta say about that. So you're probably gonna get uh, a lot of little jumps in this because. Uh, it, it's load lagging more than normal for when I don't start the 30, the 64-bit version, but whatever. But anyways, there's really good stuff you can get, and I got 330 million out of the 6 of 10, and 437 million out of the 10 of 10, which is really good, you know. The most I've gotten out of the 10 of 10 is, um... Uh, 530, 37 million, roughly. I think the most you can get is somewhere around uh, over a billion, depending on what drops. So, but the 10 of 10 can be really difficult to do, especially the last room. It's called a maze for a reason, because it is a maze. And if you screw up, it sends you back to the beginning, and you got to maneuver your way through it again. I don't know if more ships show up. I don't think they do. But, uh, yeah, it, it can be a real pain in the ass. But once you know, because it's the same, uh, and it's the same gates that you go through every time, they don't change. So once you know the gates, it becomes easy. But the last room is really, really difficult. There's a lot of stuff and a lot of damage that you have to deal with. And it's what I call not very drone friendly. There's a lot of little frigate ships in there that do what's called scramming and webbing. Um, scramming means that you can't turn on your micro warp drive for extra speed, and webbing means that they make you go slower by a percentage of whatever the strength of their web is. And ships do target drones. Oh, stop with the hitching. You know what, once we get across, I'm going to stop the game and restart it again in the 64-bit version because yeah this no can and this is uh, because it's the 32 it's being extra bad today for no reason oops too far
All right, so I'll catch up with you folks in a minute. Um, once I start the 64-bit version. All right, and we are back. So hopefully we have less hitching now. I apologize for the little jumps and all that leading up to this point. Um, but it was extra bad today, you know, today. And I think that is because um, my video card is dusty and maybe running a little to the warm side, which is okay. Hauling 29 tons, this man truck just right up that hill, no problem. It was pretty cool. Um, I was talking about Eve. Yeah, it's it's not very drone friendly because when the ships, particularly the frigates, target your drones, they warp scramble them. Your drones do have micro warp drives to make them fly faster, which means they can't micro warp drive back to your ship and because they're web they can't even move at normal slow speeds so what ends up happening is um yeah what ends up happening is um your drone almost always gets destroyed. I have not fought a maze yet where I haven't lost at least one drone. I usually lose two. And of course the loot in the end plus all the bounties that you get for killing all the pirates and everything um, help make up for that. I'm still getting a fair amount hitching but it's much it's much smaller and that that has to be because my video card is uh, dusty it needs to be cleaned off and like I, I've been lazy about it I normally have it cleaned by now I've been lazy about it for a while so I need to take care of that I need to uh, dust it off in a big way get over in this lane Exit soon. Oh, man, that load lag right there. This is how I know, like, when my computer, when my uh, video card's getting bad. I may not even wait just because of how it is right now. Uh, I may crack it open and give it a quick dusting, just the video card tomorrow. And then I'll. Uh, Recrack it open and do the GPU, not the GPU, the CPU um, tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Um, either Friday or Saturday. I'll do the uh, GPU. Hi. watching the final few uh, seasons finally of Top Gear on uh, Netflix and I feel a bit of sadness about it you know because it's gonna be all the episodes I watch and I know I can rewatch them again without a problem but it's still sad and however long it takes for the final few seasons uh, to post up on Netflix or you know final season I, don't know, I just feel bad about it. It's such an iconic show being closed down like that. But yeah, it was uh, back and forth, a little bit of YouTube comment. Uh, 
with one of you guys as a subscribers. Uh, please forgive me for not remembering names. I am terrible at remembering names like you wouldn't believe. I mean, I have a hard time remembering the part in my episode. Oops. Well, that sign wasn't important. Um, I'm terrible at remembering names. I have a hard time remembering to do my recordings and to clean the dust off my computer. So, that should tell you something. But, be that as it may, um, he's talking about spin tires, and, man, I've, if there was a game that started my cascade of not purchasing early access to games without some serious credentials behind it, that would be one of, that would, that would probably be it, spin tires. I bought wholeheartedly into spin tires. Um, I endorsed it. Not that, you know, my endorsement means a hell of a lot. But I endorsed it. I encouraged people to go look. And the developers just, for all intents and purposes, it looks like, just bailed out of the project. And that's rather upsetting, you know? Because it was a great thing. And, and if you don't think... Like, if you go and look at spin tires... Uh, if you don't think that, you know, it's actually really like that... In, uh, in Russia, in the, in the wooded, mudded areas... All you need to do is go online to YouTube... And look up, you know... Uh, Russian uh, forest logging or something like that... And you'll see, oh yes, it's very real. The old trucks, uh, the old military trucks. 60. Now that's 60 miles per hour, not 60 uh, kilometers. Because we're in England now, and it's by miles per hour. And the problem is, is that my speed gauge does not tell me uh, what miles per hour are and I can't change it now what I could do I suppose is I can go into the settings and I can have the sat nav tell me miles per hour and I can have my um, just use my regular speedo to tell me how fast I'm going um, in kilometers. But I don't want to do that, because it's much easier just to glance to the right for me to see how fast I'm going. Oh, this is annoying. It seems like every time I start getting up to a nice cruise, i got to switch roads. up so that uh, we don't have to downshift too much for this. So yeah, we'll be able to keep it ninth. That's nice. That's very nice. going on. Things have settled back into a somewhat rhythm right now. And I'm going to be straight with you, though. I'm not content uh, with it anymore. I'm okay with it, but I'm not content with it. And I don't think I'll be content with it until me and my wife move into our own place now. The, the, the vibe for me around here has changed. I no longer 
no matter what happens around here, I no longer feel um, feel safe. You know, at any given moment, at you know, somebody's whim, they can tell us to leave. And I'm not going to live under that kind of threat. Been there, done that, not doing it again. I want to go somewhere where I'm not going to be thrown out you know, just because somebody doesn't like what's going on. It may take time, but so be it. I lost my train of thought there. Which is kind of why I drifted onto that subject. Uh, I was talking about spin tires. It's still actually a good game. It really is. Uh, but it's incomplete. The best part about it, though, is there are a lot of mods for it. So you can um, mod stuff into the game. You can mod different vehicles into the game and uh, whatnot through the Steam mod system. Um, and then, of course, there's other mod sites. Where most truck sites also have mods for spin tires. So that's helpful with the game. You know, the game being open-ended, uh, that's some saving grace. If you're looking for a different pace and you don't want to expect a whole hell of a too much out of your game, then spin tires is definitely something you can look into. Uh, it's very challenging. It's a lot of fun to play. Uh, speeding ticket? Possibly. Especially I just hit a construction zone. Hmm. Nope. I was not going to slow down. Maybe I'll get one here. Maybe these are average cameras. Let's see. Yep. Must have been averaging cameras or something. Well, I don't care. Just to be straight with you. I'm finally... I should have cared. I was like, I'm finally cruising. I don't want to slow down. And we're switching roads again. <sighs> you win this round, game. I've been playing League, League of Legends lately. I've been playing uh, ARAM, of course. And I finally won uh, one today. Uh, I mean, I've won enough games, but... I've been on a bad losing streak, and it's because my teams have all been getting the same stuff. A lot of melee, a lot of, um, a lot of melee, a lot of, uh, uh, lacking poke, uh, or we'll get heavy AP teams, and I personally have been getting a, I own every champion in the game still, without a doubt. And yet, I've still, I've been getting the same champions over and over and over and over. This is no joke. I've played Swain probably four times out of ten games. That's out of how many champions that I could get? I think I've only gotten an 80 carry, or what they call marksman now, uh, once. I got Jinx once. That was it. I've played Pantheon I don't know how many times. Um, it's really aggravating, to say the least. It's really, really aggravating. It drives me up a freaking wall, let me tell you. I don't know, we may be able to complete this run today. say that engine rev sounds a little high but uh, and today it was just like one team had um, Draven Jinx Katarina and Nidalee all on the same team behind a Hecarim I mean, 
that's that, that that's a typical team right there. You could take that into fives, you know. At least almost. You'd be lacking a support. You'd have to go double ADC bottom, but whatever. You know what? Like I said before, I don't care. I'm almost tempted. There's mods out there. I'm almost tempted to go get mods that remove speeding tickets, just so I can cruise. But, I don't know. To me, that just feels a little too wrong. But, it's whatever. And finally, the game I won, I was playing Swain. And Swain's very strong in ARAM. Uh, they had a vein on their team, and they actually had a good front in front, you know, in front of the vein. They had a, a, a bunch of good people, but the problem is they didn't have a lot of pull. And not too much CC. They had, um, they had Udir, who, you know, once he gets up a few levels, can be pretty strong. They had Udir, they had, uh, Lee Sin, um, Annie. And I forget who the last one was. And then Vane. So they had like a four-man wall in front of Vane. And... Uh, sadly, the Vane player wasn't very good. And I don't knock anyone for suffering an ARAM. I don't care what character they play. If they play somebody that can be a hyper-carry like Vane, or a support, or a tank, if they don't do well, I don't blame them for it. I don't get mad at them for it. I really don't. It's ARAM. You're given a random character. You don't get to choose. And depending on what the other team is, man, just raises or lowers the difficulty. If you've got a lot of melee and they've got a lot of ranged poke, you're gonna, your game's going to suck. And if you're playing a champion that you don't know or you're playing a champion that takes a lot of um, uh, talent and ability in the game, you know, kind of like I lack, um, you're going to suffer. Like Katarina and Vayne, you know, I'll, I'll pick on those two right now. Those two champions are hyper-carry champions. They can 1v5 a team in the hands of a very skilled player. Uh, but you put them in somebody who's not skilled, or, you know, somebody who's new, um, or just not good with her, not familiar with them, like me, um, it's not going to go well. You know? It's just... It's really not going to go well. And it doesn't matter that your character is supposed to be really strong. It's still going to suck. And that's all there is to it. You know, I'm much more comfortable and feel a lot better behind the, the keyboard playing Caitlyn. Um, let's see. Caitlyn, uh, Tristana... Uh, I'm not good at Ash for some reason, although Ash is getting a rework. I, w I saw uh, a little bit of her rework, and I do not agree with it one bit. I really don't. Uh, she's basically, instead of having to turn on a, an, an ability and use mana to slow someone down, um, sh her passive now will apply frost to somebody and slow them which means she's become the queen of slow all she has to do is auto attack you and you're slowed which means laning against her could be incredibly brutal because once she lands one hit on you she can easily kite you back and forth without issue or problem So, I don't know. I mean, Riot works hard on balancing, but I don't see Riot get it right too often. You know, and the, the problem is you is you can't. You know, it's kind of like EVE. You know, it's, well, any game, I guess, could be like that. You really can't. You, you can get it as close as possible, but you can't balance it. Something will always be out of balance.
It's that simple. Alright. I can go because I'm turning into this corner. 7% damage for that. I sadly thought that was going to happen. But it's alright. It's alright. It won't cost too much to fix. I saw that swing happening. I was like, I'm a little wide. And sure enough, bang. I'm just going to run with it. Poor truck. Just get it. I'm already getting into big accidents with it. The trick for me driving in England has really become um, to, re to remind myself not just that I'm driving, uh, and I keep calling it England, I should probably be calling it Great Britain. Um, uh, I can't help it. I'm from the colonies. Um, But I re gotta remind myself to do opposite of my natural impulse. You know, my natural impulse for this game is to be driving on the other side of the road. So I remind myself, hey, make sure you go against that feeling. And you won't get into an accident unless you turn your truck too wide. have a lot of time to talk about it depending on how this turns out but I've really become disappointed in PC gaming a lot um, I can't afford a console even though I want one at this point I'm not gonna get one um, and it's just disappointing. And the most disappointing thing uh, so far, and just kind of shows the state of gaming in general, is uh, Mortal Kombat X on the PC. Uh, Mortal Kombat X on the PC, the PC port was horrible. You know, most of the the modes were missing. The graphics sucked. It was horrid. And from what I understand, since then it's been patched, but a lot of people say it's still not up to par with the console versions. Now, how can that be? You put the options in the game to be able to run it on whatever PC you want. The high-end stuff should blow um, consoles away. You know, Take a look at a game like Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto V. That looks amazing on PC. And that's a much bigger, deeper, much more complicated game than Mortal Kombat. To me, it just kind of shows an ignorance to, um, to PC games. And an indifference and an uncaring when you're going to port your PC version in such a broken state. What that says to me is that the console versions were done, but the PC version wasn't. But whoever was uh, publishing it decided, well, I want it out now, so put it out now, and we'll worry about the PC version uh, later. And that really comes to be a common theme with video game releases. The um, you know the console versions are done and really good, and the PC version sucks. And 
it's really sad that a lot of game developers and publishers neglect the PC. A lot of it's because they think, well, people are just going to pirate it anyways. You know, there are more people out there that actually buy your game than pirate it. And most people that pirate the games pirate them for a few reasons. And I'm not saying this justifies pirating. But it's kind of like stealing a loaf of bread when you're hungry. And you have no food. You know, I heard an explanation one time. Somebody said, it's like, if you're hungry and, you're, and your family's hungry and you steal a loaf of bread to feed your family is one thing. But if you were to steal a loaf of bread to feed your family and then steal and put jelly on the bread, then that's another thing. And it sounds a little weird, but it made sense to me. And I don't know how to explain it beyond that. Probably my direction went way too soon, but whatever. Um, so, a lot of people that steal from, uh, on PC games, and that's not to say that there are people out that, that do it out there because they can't, but a lot of people that pirate and steal games, uh, will steal them because, A, the game's region locked, meaning they can't get it. It doesn't, you know, their country either doesn't allow it, you know, most famously that we know of places like Australia, but there's other places too, like India, uh, China, things like that. Um, that would be one reason. Another reason is people can't afford it. Um... How can you afford a PC and then not afford a game? Well, look at me. I have a PC because I got money at one point and I was able to buy a PC. And now I don't quite have that money. So there are plenty of times I can't afford games. You know, case in point, GTA V out right now. I don't own it as much as I want to. Far Cry 4. I wasn't able to buy it when it came out. I'm not going to pirate them because I don't like having to go through everything it takes to pirate a game. Uh, but that's not to say I haven't pirated a game, and that's the next reason people pirate games. To try them. I pirated Binding of Isaac because I wasn't sure I'd actually like it. Despite the fact it came with uh, shining credentials from uh, Northern Lion, BizSnap, and the likes. Yeah. So, I did pirate the game, and I ended up loving it, so I went and bought it for real. If I didn't like it, well, I'd uninstall it, and then when I did like it, I ended up buying it. Yeah, 4% damage, so we lost 10.5 thousand, that's not terrible. And, uh, we'll just continue our even level up. All right, now we need to go rest. Wait, are there new parts available? Because we can set for a garage. Yeah, there's uh, side pipes and a new bull bar. So I want to set GPS to the nearest shop. So that instead of resting here, we'll go rest at the shop. So I want to see if I have another uh, mod that's working. Awesome. I love how it doesn't tell me how far away the shop is. No ETA to the shop, just uh, you'll get there eventually. Oh, 
cool he's letting me go. And Bobtail, I pretty much fast enough for goal. Well, it can't be too far because I just saw the name of the town there, yeah, Sheffield. So, we should be all good. We should be pretty close. It'd be nice if we were close to a fuel station, too. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be quiet, I just realized um, that I went like totally quiet, and I didn't mean to. Um, I got in my own head, I started thinking something uh, to myself, and it completely distracted me. And then I was wondering how far I drove <laughs> at that point, because um, it's not what I meant. Why am I trying to crash into the bus? I love how this is our garage. But it put me on the complete wrong road for it. Thanks, GPS. You're such a cool dude. I can see the entrance. Sometimes, man, GPS just doesn't understand what you want. And here it is. Alright, there we go. Service, this is going to cost a bit. Another 10,000, that's fine. Um, upgrades. Just looking at things, that's all. While I putter along. I wish you, I mean, you'll soon be able to put side skirts on here, but I wish you could put side pipes. Uh, but anyways. Wheels. Huh, I don't see... Maybe I didn't turn it on. I don't see the wheel mod that I got. I might have forgotten to turn it on. Which sucks. You know, because in the back, you know, Cirrus, that's it. Or Eastern Eagle. Well, I'll have to check it out. I'll check it out on the, um... Before the next episode starts. As a matter of fact... Once I'm done with this episode, I'm going to go look and see if I turned it on. I may not have turned it on. Oh, we can turn our lights off. Alright, let's get some rest and then see what we're going to tow from here. Yeah, I don't care about the income. Uh, job market. Thank you. Ooh. Cube. 24 tons. Wow. Da -da 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 -da. And, oh, we've been to, yeah, we've been to, uh, we've been there. That sucks. Um, flat car? That's going to somewhere with no town. Why is that going somewhere with no town? <sighs> I'm not overly fond of um, 
runs like that. Wreck tanker. You've been there. Uh, fifteen ton bulldozer. All right, we haven't been to Berlin. It'll be a short run. It'll be a short run. Um, 718 kilometers. I could probably pull that off in one trip. Which will be fine. That would be fine. It's not a lot. And we have that ferry trip. But it's fine. So that's probably what I'll do. Alright folks, that's going to be me done for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. Don't forget to leave a comment, like, and subscribe down below. That would be awesome. But until next time, this is going to be one big bugger. I'm going to be signing out. I'll see you then.